I want to show you how you can import an XML data file into your Access database. But first of all, what is XML? It stands for Extensible Markup Language. There's the L, there's the M, where's the X? Well, it's right there. And Extensible for the X and XML. In any case, it's a go-between program of software that is incompatible because of differences in versions or programming. So if you have one program that you want to pull data from and put it into another incompatible program, you can export it first as an XML file and then import that file into your other program. And here's an example down below of these figures. Here I have two incompatible database programs. One of them, let's say Software B, is the Access 2016 program. If I want to be able to share my information and give it to the other person in this other program who has another database program, if I can export it over here from Access 2016 into an XML file, then he can import that into his database program and vice versa. Now, in addition to the raw data that you can export into an XML file, that strips it down without any formatting that might be incompatible in between the two programs, you have next what are called schemas. Well, that's fun. And they are a set of rules that can be tied to the XML file that can be used when it comes to defining the data types. Like, for example, as you recall in an earlier training video when it came to creating our tables, and we created the fields, like for the first name field, we said that the data type for this field is going to be text. For the date field, it would be set to the data type date, and the number field to the data type of number and so on. In addition, it'll hold information about the structure of the data. So when you have all this raw data, it will say all this data that is tied to the first name goes to the first name field with this data type. Last name goes to the last name field with that data type, and so on. So we've got to have rules and structure, otherwise it's just a bunch of raw data. Now in addition to the XML and XSD files, you have what are called XSL that can be used to transform the data into an XML file, or, in other words, used to apply formatting using the XSLT extension, exporting it to the Extensible Style Sheet Language Transformer. So if you look at all these, the XSLT, the XSD, the XML, they're all extensions. Now, if you don't know anything about extensions, then I recommend that you watch my Windows training video on extensions, but we'll go over it just a little bit here. Now, before you can import an XML file, let me show you what it looks like in its raw form. And let me minimize this down to the taskbar because on my desktop in the exercises folder, well, there's the database that I want to import my data sitting in the XML file, which is right there. And then the XML here, is linked to the XSD file because remember the XML file contains just raw data. The XSD file gives structure to the raw data so it's not just a bunch of data floating all over the place. In other words, it'll say this data belongs to this field. Let's call it the first name of the client and this data belongs to the last name of the client or maybe just the street address. You see it's organizing it into those fields and assigning it the data type. Like the first name field has the data type of text and the last name, text, and so on. In any case, I want to be able to show you the contents therein, the behind the scenes coding, so you get a better feel for what XML is all about before we actually import it. Now when you look at this on my computer, you see the name of the file, which is customers, for both the XML and XSD. Then you see the dot and the three letter suffix there. That's the extension of the name, known as extensions. It tells the operating system what program to open this file up in. So like this one, it automatically, with the extension .accdb, is tagged to the Access 2016 program. And so because it's tagged, it's got that cute little icon that it knows when I double click on it to open it up in that program. These two right here, well, if I double click on either one of them, it's like, uh, go ahead and choose a program to open this up in because you don't have a program on your computer that is tied to the XML extension that we can know to open it up in. So to view it, I can open up Notepad and it'll show me the raw data therein. Let's do that. Let me right click on it. Go down to open with, and let's do notepad. And let me maximize that, and well, you can see when I scroll over to the far right that it's linked to the XSD file that contains the structure. But over here is the raw data. Now, if you don't know anything about HTML coding, well, I'll give you a, a brief rundown of it. But here it is. Here's the raw data, like one. You see over to the left, customer ID here. And then you see over to the right, customer ID, but it's got a forward slash. Anything that falls in between the two is the raw data. So it's tagging it with this HTML code that says customer ID. Here's the first tag. And then the number, which is one. 
and then it closes it off. So that's what the forward slash means when it repeats the name. So you got the tag here, customer name, and anything becomes between the opening tag and the closing tag, which again, the closing tag represents the same name with the forward slash, is going to be the customer name. So you've got the customer ID, the customer name, and then here's the address tags, open and close, that the address is in between, and then the city, Newport, and then the state, open and close tags, MA, and then the zip code. And then we've got, well, our notes, loves outdoor products in the sleeping bags and tents category. Oh, that's fancy. So that's for customer number one, or the ID number one. And then we've got customer number two with the same fields here, customer name, address, city, state, zip, and notes, and customer three. Now with the raw data, let's take a look at the XSD file to see what kind of structure it's going to give to this raw data. Let's go ahead and close out. Now with the XSD, when you right click on it, it doesn't give me an open with notepad, so we got to do it the long way. Let's click on the start button, find our notepad, and open it up. And then within notepad, click on file, go to open, and well, we're in the exercises folder, but it's looking for the text document, TXT extension. Remember, this one, well, you can't see it right here, that's in the way, is the .xsd, so we got to change it to say, look, let's look at all files. And there you go, xsd, double click, and let's maximize that, and there we go. Here's the structure to that raw data, where we're looking at customers, and here's the name of the structure, the name of the field, customer ID, and the data type is going to be auto number. And is it going to be unique? Yes. So there's going to be no duplicates, primary key as it were. And then down below that you got the customer name field, the data type is going to be text, and then you've got the maximum length of characters that it's set to as 50, and you've got the address field, the maximum characters is 45, the data type is text, 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 and then the last one is memo, so it can contain more than 255 characters, which memo is an old data type from earlier versions of Access. Now it's well, I'm going to convert it to long text, and there it is for the notes. So all that is just the structure to it that defines it, the data type, the maximum length value, number of characters. And so let's go ahead and close out of that. And are we ready to import the raw data that's linked to this, that when it imports it, it tells that, well, let me right-click and explain it one more time. Notepad, that the structure will say, okay, you've got all these customer IDs, let me put them all in one column, the customer ID. You have all these customer names instead of just floating all about. We got to have structure where it says the customer names, put them all in the next column. And then in the next column, the addresses and the city, state, and so on. Does that make sense? I knew it did. Let's go ahead and close out and then open up the access database, double click. And then to import that XML file, we're just importing that file, but remember it's linked to the XSD to give it structure. So when it comes in, it'll have something that makes sense or that is importable into our access database as far as the cleanliness giving us the organization through that structure. Let's come up here, click on the external data, go to the import and link group, click on new data source. And we want to do it from file and hey, there it is, XML. Click on it and then let's browse for it. And it's on the desktop. So over here in the main area of the desktop, it's in the exercises folder. And we just want the raw data, but remember it's linked to this to give it structure. So if we select that, that wouldn't make sense because, well, first of all, we chose to open up the XML file. And second of all, that's got no data. So let's go ahead and double click on XML so it points right to it. And when we click okie dokie, there we go. It says it's a table or it's going to import it as a table. The name of the table is customers. Now, I already have a table over here. It's called customers, but it has the three-letter prefix, TBL. This one's not going to have it, so when I import it, you'll know the difference. The TBL customers was already there, and then just the customers is what we're importing. And there's the fields, the structure. Oh, that's nice. So all the customer IDs will be in the customer ID field. The three records, one, two, three, the customer names in the same field. Well, different records, of course, but their names are going to be in the same column and the address is in the same column and so on. And then down below the import options, if you just chose the structure, there'd be no data. It's like just importing the XSD file without the XML, the data. And then you can append that if you want to a table, but remember it's gotta have the same data type and same field names. And so if it did, over here in my customers table, I could just add the data over to it.
but let's go ahead and do it as a separate table, structure and data, click okie dokie, close out, and there's our customers. Remember, that was already here, the three letter prefix TBL, and here's our new customers table, double click, and remember, we only had a total of three records in there. So we have the customer ID, and these are text fields here, and the notes should be long text. It said memo in the XSD structure, but remember that was from the earlier access versions when you export this file, it was the memo. So we can go ahead and right click on it and go to the design view, and there we go, it knew. It changed it, well, it doesn't have memo as the data type, so it says, okay, your long text. Then right click, go back to the data sheet view, and loves outdoors, well we can hover over to the right hand side of the column header and click and drag until we can see more of that. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.